Hello, everybody. Welcome to lesson two of watercolor um, at our Safe at Home grant. Um, today, we are going to be painting this picture, which is depicting a rainy sky. And it was um, inspired by this photo. Uh, this was one scary time to be standing on the roadside taking a picture when I should have been in the basement. But it was at the cabin and I didn't have a basement anyway, so I took my chances and I'm still here. So what we're going to need for this class is we're going to need a little bit heavier paper if you have something that is uh, 140 pound. If you're using the paper that is provided in your kit, that's great. I did try it on that paper and it did work, but it just doesn't take the water quite as well. And you might find more buckling. And you also have 10 sheets of paper in there. So if you find that it failed the first time, try it again because it'll eventually work for you. And a little bit of practice doesn't do any harm. The colors that we're going to be using are the same three colors we used last time. We're going to be using yellow ochre, Prussian blue, and burnt sienna. So those are the three colors. If you still have them on your palette, that's great because these are all dried up now, but all I need to do is add water to them and I get my washes back. So it's great, never, never wash your palette because especially if you're kind of cheap like I am, save money where you can. So that's what we'll need. We're going to need all three sizes of brushes. We're also going to need our pencil and eraser. Don't forget it's really important to have a piece of paper that you can use for trying your colors, testing them. And I have my yogurt lids, which I saved from last time because it's the same colors. So all I need to do is add water to those as well. And I've got my washes back. So the first thing we're going to do, oh, and don't forget to tape it down on all four sides. And one other thing I didn't mention, your kit includes a sponge. So this is, it's quite a good size sponge, but you don't need this much. I, I prefer to use a smaller size of a sponge. So what you do is you just take a little chunk of it and rip it off. So you wanna be able to get into little edges. I've actually painted this area with a sponge and this little area here and these little trees and everything has been with a sponge. And if it was a big sponge, it would just be all floppy and loose. So you wanna have a nice, nice small areas that you can get into. And then save this sponge because you'll probably use a sponge for many other of our classes. The sponges, if we wash them and reuse them, they'll last for a really long time. Okay, so we're gonna start off with a, a low horizon. You can see here that it's about a third of the way up. Horizon lines are never really ever half and half. They're either a third of the way up with a low area for our landscape. That gives us a chance to really have a wild sky, which I think we're going to have. Look at this wild sky. I was really happy with this one. But sometimes with this technique, you kind of take your chances and you never know what's going to really happen. Um, sometimes if you're not having, uh, if, if the emphasis is on the landscape, then your sky would be high up. Your, land, your um, horizon line would be a third of the way from the top. So we're going to be using different horizon lines all through our classes. So we've drawn the line here. Now I'm going to talk to you about, about um, graded wash. A graded wash is a wash that starts off quite dark and it gets light as you work it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wet my brush and then I am going to take my yogurt lid and I'm going to put about six brush loads of water on there. I'll mix it up with the 
the paint that was there before. Now that's very pale. And then I'm going to, I have to wet this. And I'm going to mix that with the water until I get the intensity that I'm hoping for. I really like working with paint that is already dried. It kind of gives you more control. You never get more paint on your brush than you really want. Some people prefer to use their paint out of the tubes when it's still wet. And that's kind of a personal thing. You kind of develop that pre preference after you've painted for a little while and, and you find what you like the best. So now I'm going to test this on my test paper and see if it's strong enough. Um, I'm not really happy with how strong it is. I have to start off quite strong because each time I paint a line, I am going to make it a little bit weaker and I'll show you how. Now we're going to turn it upside down. Oh, just wait, wait. Don't do anything yet. We have to mix our cloud wash as well. Now for the cloud, we're going to be putting on Prussian blue and burnt sienna. And I already had a nice little puddle of that before, so I'm going to see how, how dark it is. Um, it needs a little bit more blue. That's why I like to have a test paper, because it really helps you know what you need to add and what you need to do to change it. That was a little bit brownish. I really like to mix my grays rather than take it out of a tube because when you use the same color scheme throughout your whole picture, it adds unity to your, to your picture. Okay, now I've added some more blue to this and I have to have a fair bit. That's why I'm using the yogurt lids because it allows you to have more paint. If we were just using this, we wouldn't have enough room to make a, a wash and to mix colors. Okay, let's try this and see. Ah, oh, now it's too blue. So we add a bit more brown. It's a little bit trial and error. Let's see now. Okay, now we're going to put that aside for a minute and we're just going to focus on the yellow ochre. And I'm going to show you how to do a graded wash. We're turning our page upside down so the horizon is, it looks like it's at the top, but this is actually going to be the ground. So we're going to be painting with our um, largest brush that we have. Usually I would use a larger brush for this, but this is what you have, and so we're going to use what you have. Um, and actually, for the, for the paper that you're using, this does not really put a lot of extra water on your, on your paper, so you won't have as much buckling. This is actually going to be the ground. Now, we're going to dip our brush in the water and dip it back into the paint and it's going to be a little bit weaker. You can see how it's a little bit weaker. Then we're going to dip in again and it's going to be weaker again. We're going to dip it in again and weaken it again. Dip it again. Each time you dip your brush into the water, you're making a weaker solution. Now I'm going to tip it a little bit because I want it to be running down. Then I'm going to dip it again. Eventually I'll just have clear water on there with just so little pigment that you can't even tell it's there. If I kept it as yellow as it is, my cloud would end up being green, which is usually a real sign of a tornado coming. And then it'll be pretty much clear water. Now we have to be very quick when we do this. We're going to turn it upside down again 
and we're going to take that gray mixture that we mixed up and we're going to dab it on and we're going to let it run down. Can you see how it's running down? That's the rain coming down. It's going to look like a pretty wild sky. And this is all really uh, by luck. You never really, you never really know. You can set up all the conditions and hope for the best. But it's kind of fun. And I'm just, you know, letting it run down. And it has to be really wet in order for it to run down. Because if it's not wet enough, it just stops. So there we go, we're just gonna let it run for a minute. If we wanted it to run further, we could just wet here. And that makes it run further, but it also makes it run down our landform, which is okay, because we're gonna be covering up our landform. So that's a pretty wild looking sky. If you wanted to make the clouds up here a little bit um, more billowy, while it's still wet, you can do that. And it just kind of runs around up there. If it's lying flat, it won't run down. It'll just kind of stay where it is. I'd find just to use a little bit of a dabbing brush stroke. You don't want to be heavy handed at all with this. So this was a very threatening day, the day that I took that picture. And if we turn it, it might run a little bit more. You can see it running a little bit as it's coming down. That's something we on the prairies are lucky enough to see because we have big, big skies. Now, we're just going to let that dry. So I used the blow dryer to help me dry my picture um, because uh, it's a good idea not to, not to waste too much time. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw our landscape. Now our landscape has some distant bushes, which we are eventually going to sponge in. So you could just very, very lightly indicate where that's going to go. And I'm just going to stop at about halfway because I'm, I don't want it to be interfering with these trees that are going to be over here. Then we have kind of like a, a distant little field that is just below those. And I'm just going to put it in here and it's, it's just going to be dipping down a little bit. And remember to not press very heavily. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to have this little uh, group of trees and they're going to be going right off the page. So you're just going to draw your vertical lines and have them, have them come at, at various uh, distances from each other, different heights. Because um, well, we talked a little bit last week about how nature is, is never really too regular. You don't want it to look too regular. And that's basically all the drawing that we're going to do. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of yellow ochre, which we should have some in here, and our middle size brush. And we're just going to do uh, a the, this landscape right here, this little part. We're just going to paint that, that uh, yellow ochre just across. Already I'm seeing a, a nice landscape taking form. I kind of like what happened to the sky too. I'm not unhappy with the sky. If I'm unhappy, you'll know it because I'll complain in bellyache and you'll want to turn your computers off and everything. Okay, so while that's drying, we're going to mix up um, another wash of yellow ochre. So I'm just going to move that out of the way and hope you can all see this. We're going to be using our sponges next. 
And so when you're using the sponge, the sponge is very, very thirsty and it's going to want to suck up all the paint you have. So you want to make sure you have enough to get you through. Now this yellow ochre is going to be not as strong as, uh, as if it was right out of the tube, but it's going to be a decent strength. And I'm going to add a little bit more. I want to make sure I have plenty. And I don't mind using lots of extra paint because I know that if it's left over, all I need to do is add water the next time. It never gets wasted. The only time it ever gets wasted is if you wash it. Some people like to wash things in between and you know, that's okay too, but you don't like to waste it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to, how to use that sponge. The sponge starts off being very dry and stiff. So you get a piece of paper towel, hold that in one hand, take your sponge and dip it in your water and squeeze it till it's, till it's totally saturated and then it will start to soften up. Squeeze out the excess water and then put it in your paper towel and scrunch it up because you don't want it to be soaking wet. Basically what we're doing is softening it. Now it's nice and soft and easy to work with. So now we have drawn our vertical lines here and what we're going to do is we're going to dip our sponge into the paint that we've just uh, mixed and we're just going to dab it. And you can see how I'm dabbing it along the verticals from the bottom to the top. This dabbing, if we're very light and don't press too hard, gives you a texture that's kind of leaf-like. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make something that is the texture of leaves. I'm pressing very, very lightly. If you press hard, then it fills in all those little spaces and it no longer looks like leaves. Now you're going to have some leftover. So what you're going to do is, you know that section that you painted plain yellow? Leave it alone, but then take your sponge and just boing along, boinga, 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 along on your nearby stuff. This is your foreground. And you're just going to bounce it along and fill in that area, leaving lots of the lighter yellow that you, that you put on at the beginning. You're also going to very gently, with the very edge of your sponge, just boing a little bit in here in our distant horizon trees. Now it's hard because it's kind of a small little area, so you don't have to fill in the whole area. We're going to use our brush in there too. Okay, so while we're waiting, we'll just let that dry for a minute. Okay, so that should all be dry. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to start adding some green. So we've got our yellow in the distance, and so we're going to take our middle-sized brush and we've got a little bit of wash here of, of yellow ochre. We're going to dip our brush into a little bit of blue. Ooh, I had to put fresh blue on there because my other stuff I got all used up. So now it's going to be a little bit more green than I really want it to be. Well, maybe it's okay. So now I've got some green there. And... When I go into my distant bushes, watch this. I'm starting at the horizon and I'm just going to dab along and I'm going to just make some distant trees on the horizon. And there's still some yellow showing from where I sponged and I want that to still show because that's, 
it's kind of important to let that yellow still show. So I'm going pretty light and I'm just kind of dabbing. I'm not being heavy handed at all. And then I'm just kind of gradually reducing it so that it's just a little tiny line of dots. So, while it's still wet, I'm going to get a little bit more Prussian blue in there. And I'm going to go just at the very base of this and watch it bleed up. This is called wet on wet. The sky we did was wet on wet too, where you, you paint while the paint be, um, below it is still wet and it bleeds. And there we have our distant trees. And you can see here, it's much like that. Now, if you wanted to have a little bit more ochre showing, which I did here, while it's still wet, you can take your brush and you can dab a little ochre on it and that'll bleed down. And while it bleeds down, it just makes, makes more of a green. It becomes a yellowish green. So you can mix colors right on your paper this way. It's fun to, it's fun to paint wet on wet, but you have to be really careful because it can so get away on you. It's very hard to control, but I like that. I like the way it looks, so I'm going to leave it. And while I'm leaving that to dry, I'm going to work on a different spot in my picture. I'm not going to wash my sponge and I'm going to dip it into the green that was made by adding the Prussian blue to the um, yellow ochre. I've dipped my sponge in and now I'm going, to, I'm going to kind of sponge in the area just very lightly, making sure that the yellow is still showing, working my way up the branches of the vertical lines that we drew earlier. I'm just going to, we'll end up with three or four layers of paint on these, on these bushes. They don't really start to take shape and look like bushes until you've had about three or four different layers of sponging. And then we use our brushes. So there's a lot more work that goes into this than you would think. So um, that's the lightest green that we're going to use. So I'm just going to leave that like so. And then, I've still got paint on my brush. Notice this little area right here in the foreground. This little area sort of stays yellow. So I'm going to start sponging in my foreground, just leaving that yellow area. Um, I should show you the photograph. That'll help you see what I mean. See, there's this yellow area here and then it starts to be green. And then there's this yellow, this distant yellow field that we also painted and left. So I'm just painting along, I'll dip it back on my, as soon as it starts looking dry and not working, then I just dip it back into my palette, or in this case, my yogurt lid. I hope you guys are busily eating yogurt every day so that you'll have yogurt lids to mix your colors in that we have to sometimes make sacrifices in the name of art. And sometimes good health is a benefit that never suspect will ever happen, but it does. So that's that. We're going to let that dry for a few minutes. Well, that should be dry now. Now we'll mix a little bit more Prussian blue in there to make a darker green. You could even add just a little dab of burnt sienna and that will make it so it's a little bit more of a brownish green. You see how I've mixed that in there? And maybe a little bit more blue. It looks like we're making the dog's breakfast, but actually if you use the same three colors that we've used in the rest of the landscape, it will always go well. So then we're going to take our sponge again, our sponge that we haven't washed. We're not going to wash it until the end of the class. 
and we're going to dip it in that shade of green that's a little bit darker and we're going to start boinging it onto the trees again and you can see now try to make sure that it's darker at the bottom and stays a little bit lacier towards the top so you can see it's starting to take shape now Remember to keep your touch very, very light because we want the yellow and the lighter green to show as well. With watercolor, uh, it's transparent and the colors below it are always going to show unless you're working very heavy handed. And, and it's a good thing. You want to see those other colors. It adds depth and interest. So it was starting to dry out a little bit, so I dipped it again. And don't worry if you don't get right to the top, because we're going to be using our brush pretty soon to, uh, to help us with that. Then we're going to go back into our little field, and look at that. I just love the way it's leaving the little, the little dots there. The sponge is such a great tool. Sometimes there's just no substitute for what, for what a sponge can do. And we'll just kind of work it back. But as you work it back towards the other field, you go a little bit lighter. Most detail and depth of color happens in the foreground. The closer you get to the bottom of the page, which is where we say the, the viewer would be standing if you were taking this as a photo, the darker and richer the colors are and the more detail you would see. So that might be enough for now. Now we're going to take our brush and again we'll take that medium brush. We haven't used the fine brush yet but we will. And we're going to go into the trees a little bit and we're going to, can you see what I'm doing with the brush here? I'm kind of just working my way up the stems. And now it's becoming a little bit more specific. And, and I'm going right up to the top of these little branches. As we get near the bottom, it gets a little bit more dense. And I'm being very, very light and very random. See, now they're starting to look like little bushes. So I'll just pause that and let you work away at that. Remember when you are dotting paint anywhere, especially when you're making leaves and foliage, make sure that you don't get really regular. Make sure that it's really random, and I, I can't emphasize that enough, that we don't want it to look, uh, you know, really, really regular. We want it to, to look like leaves really grow. They never look really, really um, regular. I'm also dotting with my brush in the foreground here just to, uh, you know, to, to put more leaves a little bit closer up. I don't know what kind of a crop this is. And I guess we don't have to know. Now, now get a little bit more Prussian blue so that your green is is quite a bit darker. And then we are going to put a bluish green at the base of, oh I added some brown too. And we're going to put that at the base of the bushes because that's going to be kind of uh, a, a shadow. See how it's a little bit darker here? Just at the, just here and there, so that it's like the leaves are casting shadows on the bottom of the tree. And of course, underneath the trees, there's going to be an area that's very dark. So, that just kind of gives a, a more three-dimensional look to your bushes. And everything is done very lightly by dotting. So that's pretty much it for our trees. 
Along the top edge of this, of this area, I have just put a little bit of green, just very, very faintly um, with our brush. And so if it's too dark, just add a little water. And we're just going to kind of dot it in there. So I guess it's maybe just another kind of little something that's growing there. It's hard to tell from the photograph. But, and, it, and of course we're, we're not being very regular. It's just, it's just to indicate that that's, that's the end of this little area. So we'll just, it's very faint. We hardly even know it's there. And we'll just let that dry. When that's dry, you'll notice that there's a little spot here where there's some little branches sticking out that must be dead stuff. See in the photograph, it's hard for you to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our skinny, skinny brush, the skinniest one, and we're going to switch back to our palette that has the bluish gray. And we'll dip into our uh, burnt sienna and we'll make kind of a grayish blue, brownish grayish blue color. And we're going to make these branches out of that. And we're just going to start at the base and we're just going to make little, it could even be a little bit. Just add a little bit more color to that. And it doesn't matter if you get it all mixed up because it's the same colors. So there. And I'm just going to make, it's, it's sort of like just a, maybe it's a dead hedge or something here and there. Just not too, uh, Not too regular. How often do I say that? You're going to be waking up in the night and hearing my voice coming through your dreams saying, don't be too regular. So the final step is everybody's favorite step. Guess what? Spattering. So you're going to use your green again. And you're just going to, do you have a brush that is kind of bristly like this? It's not a watercolor brush that was sent with the, with the kit. If you don't have a brush like that, you could use an old toothbrush. And what you do is you dip that into the green. And you might even have to make more green. But we all know that we just add Prussian blue and the yellow ochre and we make another green, and then we're going to have to remember this important step, protect your sky. Cover it with an other piece of paper. Then hold your finger near the paper, about an inch off the paper, and paint your finger. And when you paint your finger, there will be spatters. Then you don't get it all over your kitchen or dining room or wherever you're working. And the harder you, the harder you paint your finger, the bigger the, the little blobs are going to be of paint that come down. If you get paint spattering on something you don't want, take a Kleenex or a paper towel and dab them off. It won't take them off completely, but it'll minimize them. So that just gives another bit of texture and a little bit more dimension and it's kind of nice if you get them on your trees too. And there we are. There is your stormy day, your day where you're getting a lot of rain coming out of the sky. That's about all there is to it. Um, when it's completely dry, you can take the tape off and that is always, it always looks so much nicer without the tape and it leaves a nice white border. And then don't forget to sign your name on the lower uh, right hand corner if you can because that's, uh, you worked hard on that and you should get lots of recognition from your friends and family who come to your house to see your artwork. So um, thank you for tuning in today and uh, next week we'll be 
doing another painting together. Have a good week. <laughs>